What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ordell and in today's video we're covering an opening trap that you hippo players really got to watch out for. In most lines and variations, the move order of the hippopotamus defense doesn't usually matter a ton. But as shared by my guy Leon, there is a moment in which it really does and it depends on White's setup starting off with the move e4. Now there's a ton of different ways that we can reach the hippopotamus defense setup, but most players seem to like playing g6 followed by bishop g7. So far this just seems like a normal modern defense. Whole idea being we're going to continue with d6 and then here most players continue with knight d7 whole idea being that we can play e6 knight e7 b6 bishop b7 and all of a sudden we're going from a modern to a hippopotamus defense setup but guys notice against this move bishop c4 knight d7 is a huge mistake because of this move bishop takes f7 with check what is going on well notice after king takes f7 white has knight g5 if king f8 White has knight e6 with check and winning our queen. And if we play the move king e8, knight e6 is played and our queen cannot even move. This position is resignable. So guys, following this knight g5 check, obviously king f8 and king e8 both lose a queen. But we can't play this move king f6. I mean, I guess technically this move saves the queen because knight e6 is no longer an option. But White just plays queen f3 and we just got checkmated at move 7. So y'all, going back to this position, in which case we played the move knight d7, and white threw in their bishop, taking off our f-pawn. If we take this bishop back, knight g5 check is going to be played, and we're either going to lose our queen or simply get checkmated. The better move here is king f8, simply stepping to the left one square, but even then, we're in big, big trouble. White here can play knight g5, threatening, yet again, to play knight e6 with check and win our queen on d8. And here, if we stop it with a move like knight b6, white has a bunch of different options here, but honestly, I mean, white could just continue with knight e6 check again. Whole idea being, okay, we take off the knight, but now after bishop takes e6, we're down a pawn. We have a king on f8, and this bishop on e6 is an absolute killer. Guys, let's just analyze this position for a moment and think about the chances that black has here. Notice that this bishop is very active and it's making it hard for black to even move. And what piece can actually attack this? Let's just say that you can place these knights anywhere on the board at the moment. There are no squares that currently attack this bishop in which a knight wouldn't get captured. What am I talking about? Well, the only squares that this knight could attack the bishop is c5, f4, and g5 currently, all of which are currently attacked by white. At the same time, our queen would be very nice on f6, attacking that bishop and trying to get out of there, but we can't get our queen to the square without playing queen e8 and queen f7, in which, yet again, this bishop would simply win our queen. So guys, it's very hard for us to even develop and move in this position. And guys, this bishop is really locking down our position as a whole. White here is just going to continue to develop their pieces. And on top of that, has queen f3 check ideas in the air. They're going to continue to attack our king, and we're simply in big, big trouble. So y'all, I just wanted to warn you hippopotamus defense players, if you do see this setup of e4, knight f3, and bishop c4, just be careful to bring your knight to d7. There's a lot of different moves that we can play here. I mean, we could just continue with a6. Whole idea being that bishop takes f7 no longer works because we could just bring our king back to e8 and this square on e6 is currently defended by our bishop on c8. We could also continue with the move e6. This is personally my favorite option. Okay, white wants to activate their bishop. Let's just close this bishop off with a move like e6. White could try to create something here with bishop g5, attacking our queen on d8, but in that case, okay, we're just gonna play knight e7, which is what we're gonna do anyways. And the very next move, yet again, we were gonna play h6, let's just play h6 and attack this bishop. If a move like bishop h4, we have g5 ideas. If this bishop runs away, they really just wasted the tempo. And if bishop takes e7, we can take back with the queen and continue with normal hippopotamus defense type chess, and we have achieved equality. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to learn the theory behind the hippopotamus defense, click that video to the left. If you'd like to see our entire hippopotamus defense playlist, click that playlist to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.